doing tonight? We got a nice little radio special all worked up for ya. We got the residents, we got other special guest stars. How about that? Well, here we go. And gentlemen, the residents from San Francisco. This is Sid Powell in the RAO studios in Houston, Texas. I'm here with Mr. J. Clem, representative of Ralph Records. The residents themselves are in the studio with us, but are refusing to join us in the interview. They are apparently content to walk around the studio banging on instruments and making strange noises. Now, perhaps Mr. Clem will tell us the very interesting story behind the selection we just heard, Death in Barstow, from the residents' EP, Baby Fingers. Glad to, Sid. Baby Fingers was originally the third side of Fingerprints, the residents' latest album. The residents had recorded a three-sided LP to be released as such. Ralph Records disapproved this action due to the economic infeasibility and a compromise was reached in which this extra material was pressed into an EP and is included with the Fingerprints Collector's Edition. Well, that's very interesting. Perhaps you can explain another story then, Mr. Clem. I understand that the residents simply hate and abhor the Beatles. What can you say about that? Uh, Sid, that's absolutely false. The residents do not hate the Beatles. They have simply expressed an attitude which indicates boredom with the present-day rock and roll culture. All right, then, perhaps you can explain to me why the rumor is currently running rampant through Australia that the Beatles are, in fact, the residents. Uh, such a rumor exists, Sid, because Ram Magazine in Australia published a story uh, supporting the argument that the residents are, in fact, the Beatles. But this is, of course, untrue. It's absolutely untrue, Sid. But then maybe it explains why the residents have released their new single with a Beatles song right on it. Well, it may or may not explain that, Sid. It just so happens, though, the residents did record Flying, a Beatles tune from the Magical Mystery Tour album. You may be more interested to know, however, that the Beatles themselves perform a resident song on the flip side of this very same record. Aha! It must have been really tough to get those lads back in the studio again. Uh, tough it was, Sid. In fact, uh, the Beatles don't even know they were there. Let us hear this controversial new single right now. <laughs>
everybody, if we haven't done what we could have done, we've tried. Please, everybody, if we haven't done what we could have done, we've tried. Please, everybody, if we haven't done what we could have done, we've tried. Please, everybody, if we haven't done what we could have done, we've tried. Please, everybody, if we haven't done what we could have done, we've tried. Please, everybody, if we haven't done what we could have done, we've tried. Please, everybody, if we haven't done what we could have done, we've tried. Please, everybody, if we haven't done what we could have done, we've tried.
We'll be back to the resident special in a moment. One more time, this time playing Satisfaction. Once again, they've butchered up an old-time hit. I'm Sid Powell here in the RAO studios with Jay Clem, representative of Ralph Records. Mr. Clem did indeed the residents perform this music live last year. 
Uh, that's right, Sid. Last year at the Rather Ripped Records fifth annual birthday party, the residents made their second ever live appearance, an appearance in which they actually appeared as mummies and were assisted by the appearance of Orphan Omega Berry, the Siamese twin tag team wrestlers. Siamese twin tag team wrestlers, indeed. Well, perhaps you can explain to me why they don't perform more often, Mr. Clem. Is perhaps the show as bad as the music? Indeed not, Sid, although it could appear to be that way to the lesser intelligent members of the audience. The simple fact is that residents are a bit reluctant to expose themselves in public. Well, let's hear some more of this residence music. Okay. side of the resident single, Satisfaction. Now, Mr. Clem, I've read that Trouser Press Magazine has referred to Satisfaction as the most determinedly repellent music ever heard. Can you comment on this? I'll be glad to, Sid. Um, I can certainly see the point of view for that contention. I think, however, the key word here is determinedly. One should question the purpose or intent of this work, and uh, if they do, I'm sure that they will agree that this is, in fact, the most determinedly repellent music ever heard. Well, is there then any truth to the rumor that the residents are very seldom seen out in the daytime? Uh, quite true, Sid. Now, the fact is we frequently have to have their food sent in to them. Now, don't you feel a little foolish in this position? You're no more than babysitters to a group of malcontented young fops. Be that as it may, Sid, we here at uh, Ralph Records and the Cryptic Corporation support the residents in their point of view concerning the sorry state of affairs of this culture. We further feel that it's necessary to take certain supportive action to ensure that the residents, as well as other artists like them, are able to exist and to function in this culture, which will in turn ensure that the culture has a future rather than having only a past. Well, maybe you have a point there. Let's get on with some more of this so-called music. Now we have the residents' melancholy lassie from the EP, Baby Fingers.
information on the residence music is available in a free catalog from Ralph Records, 444 Grove Street, San Francisco, California, 94102. We'll be back after station identification. Okay, we are back in the RAO studios in Houston. This is Sid Powell with Mr. J. Clem, representative of Ralph Records. During the next few minutes, we will be hearing some of the early residence material. The first selections will be a medley from the 1972 release, Santa Dog. Mr. Clem, can you comment on this Santa Dog? Uh, sure enough, Sid, Santa Dog was the residence's first press record. It represents their 1972 Christmas card, as well as being the first official Ralph Records release. Well, I understand that the last few copies of this recording went for the ridiculous price of $25. Is this true? Uh, absolutely true, Sid. In fact, it was quite a deal at $25. I understand if somebody wanted to buy one today, they'd have to go as high as 50 smackaroos. Well, wonders never cease. Let's hear some of this Santa Dog. Santa dogs at Jesus' feet, the Santa dogs at Jesus' feet, the Santa dogs at Jesus' feet, the there's no presence, there's no presence in the future. In the future. Flitting in the slitting sand of snow, the sand of slips. A flitting in the slitting sand of snow, the sand of slips. A flitting in the slitting sand of snow, the sand of slips. A flitting in the slitting sand of snow, the sand of slips. A flitting. Slipping sinners, no missing the sins. Thank you. 
further back in time to the days of the residence's very beginning. Now, I understand that the residents at this time were working with and highly influenced by two figures, the mysterious Ensenada and the British guitar player Snake Finger Lithman. Uh, that's right, Sid. Let's talk about Snake Finger Lithman first. Uh, Snake Finger had caught word of the residents' experimental uh, music and tape recording work they were doing at the time, and uh, incidentally, Sid, these, some of these residents' tapes are said to have found their way into Germany back in the early 70s and, and actually influenced some of the early German avant-gardists. Aha! Anyway, one day Snakefinger arrived in San Mateo, California, where the residents had their studios at that time, and they began to get acquainted and did some work and actually produced some very interesting tapes. Well, let's hear some of this Snakefinger. Now we'll have the residents doing Frank Zappa's King Kong with Snakefinger Lifman on guitar. <laughs>
Now, Mr. Clem, I understand that the mysterious Ensenado was highly influential on the resident's philosophic background. Now, how can this be, since he has been said to speak no English? Uh, well, Sid, it is true that the mysterious Ensenado spoke very little, if any, English. However, he did find the English language quite fascinating, and he was quite fluent um, verbally as well as musically, employing the, the theory of phonetic organization. Uh, a synthesis of the two uh, produced very good results uh, in the situation. It was, it was this, uh, this musical implementation of, of phonetic organization that was so highly influential on the resident's music. Now, wait just a minute. Perhaps we should hear just a little bit more about this phonetic organization. Okay, Sid, I'll try to give you a little bit about that. Now, it's, it's a little tough to try to explain in English, but if I actually uh, uh, implement the theory of, of uh, phonetic organization, I can just come up like this. Hmm. Well, perhaps we should hear it from the mysterious Ensenada himself. Here he is with the residents doing Kamikaze Lady.
Jacobs in a row. So, but are they going to miss moral apathy to show or to be shown? Is a question never known, not even by me to exist. For what's not known is just less fear and knowing that's at least an edge. But an edge is only an edge. Even the Empire State Building has one. And what is truth, I say for Zeus? Why, truth is like a baby Ruth. And what could be ever sweeter? Well, maybe to have a young red eater. Oh, young red, my kid, today, and whoopee snort. And whoopee snort away. Sid Powell in the RAO studios with Jay Clem, representative of Ralph Records. We've just heard one more of the resident's songs, Whoopi Snorp. Can you comment on this one, uh, Mr. Clem? Uh, yeah, Sid, uh, Whoopi Snorp is part of the uh, album entitled Blorp is Set, a, a production by the Los Angeles Free Music Society. Uh, the usage of this song was donated by the Cryptic Corporation to Lathams for that purpose. And as I understand it, this album contains quite a few selections, all performed by typical California idiots. Uh, yeah, well, Sid, uh, possibly typical California idiots if you're a typical dumb Texas redneck bigot. Hmm. Well, now, as I understand it, the residents have a new project in the works. It concerns the Eskimo culture and, once again, this mysterious Ensenada. What's the connection? Uh, the connection, Sid, is that um, our longtime associate, the mysterious Ensenada, has been residing for some time at the North Pole and living with the Eskimos. Uh, recently in the mail, the um, in sent to the residents a cassette tape comprised of uh, various audibles connected with uh, various uh, cultural fe festivities, which are uh, a very integral part of the Eskimo culture. It is upon this very concept that the residents have set about to do their next album. And and you mean to tell me that you actually believe this fabrication? I said that these yeah. that these these residents said came I know to you with this story and you went for it. I personally know the mysterious Ensenada very well. I know him to be a very distinguished gentleman of unquestioned credibility. I personally have heard these tapes and I will personally verify now, their authenticity. Now wait just a minute. Let's get something straight here. Why are these residents walking around this room? Yeah, let's do, let's do get it straight. Banging on straight. What they're doing is noise performing for you their very most recent composition, which they were so gracious enough to do to help us out with now, this radio special, just like now, we agreed. Now, and here you go trying to put something down that you don't even now, understand. Now look here, you might go for that, you might swallow that, but I don't. Yeah, well, that's your shortcoming, Sid. I'm sorry. Oh, look, at least they're doing You, just don't, you don't have the scope to appreciate this thing. That's your hand. Well, now, wait a minute. Let's come on here now. Why yeah, you come sit? on. You come on. Why won't they sit down here and interview with us? Why won't they sit down here and interview with us? They're more interested in the art than they are the personal exposure. They're not in this for glory. They're in this for the betterment of our culture. Now, we've got one more thing to do. We're going to get in the residence to play one more song. Yeah, now, on the interview, they get out of here. Peeling ceiling wax as we heard Walter say. 
love me tender, love me sweet, love me like I love my feet. Sits me down with Ezra Pound, but don't forget to eat. I'll cause the country boy to cook a carrot or a cake, but don't forget the feelings of a friend are hard to fake. Coats and Quaker Oats, and if his wife should sue. Wanda, Wanda, where you went? And tell me what you take. I took the tongue of Philip Jones and left it in the lake. But my dear, I think I fear that you had lost your way. Cause Grandma Eggs, cause Grandma Eggs, for all you let me think. He said, Your trust is like a crust too brittle and too thin. I said, You're full of nigger nuts and look like Red Tim Tim. Common ground not ever found, but please from dad to son. Or is it just believing that the evening steals the sun? I said, Your snoot is full of poop, should be in a shell. And then I said, Your stupid oh, man. Free cattle of the Western 